Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be working on the other vehicle in the garage. It's our 2018 Nissan Pathfinder. We're going to be doing the front brakes. So pretty much depending what vehicle you have, this is relatively similar between any make and model. But for this specific vehicle, 2018 Pathfinder. So first things first, loosen off your wheel, jack up the car, get the wheel off, pop the hood, come under here. This is your brake re reservoir. Just take off the cap, put it aside. That's got to be open for when we replace the brake pads and all that. Don't have to worry about any pressure in the system. It lets the air out, lets the fluid go up and down while we're working under there. Makes your life a lot easier. Just make sure nothing gets in there. I already did, but clean off this cap. If it's really gross and grimy under your engine, you don't want anything falling in there. So give the cap a wipe, take it off, and you're good to go. And if you're wondering what brakes we are using, I got these straight off of Amazon Max Advanced Brakes for the pads, and we have the rotors there as well. Same set. This actually comes with a front and rear set. We will be doing the back in another video. Don't have time to do it today, so it'll be a two-parter. But for the front brakes, Max Advanced Brakes, you can see, comes with your new hardware, your pads, and then like I said, rotors in another box. All right, so we got the wheel off, car's jacked up. If you're wondering, the lug nuts are 21 millimeter on here, and that also works for the locking key. It's a 21 mil on the top there to get your locking wheel nut off. So once this is all done, wheel's out of the way. We can work on getting the caliper apart just so we can get the pads out. And what you need to do there, now that the loud car is out of the way, what you need to do there is grab yourself a 17 mil. You come back here for your caliper, your top one here, and same on the bottom there. That's a 17 mil. Knock those loose. You can take the top part off. If you're just changing the pads, all you got to do is remove one of them. That'll flip down. You can pop the pads in and out very easily. But because we're doing the whole thing, we'll have to get this out of the way and then move the actual bracket here for the calipers out of the way as well and now once you get those two bolts out there this almost falls off on its own just give it a wiggle and it'll pop off now don't let this hang make sure it's always supported on something your brake line is attached to this you got your little hanger there you can pop that off if need be just flip this up somewhere where it's not gonna hang and put all the weight and pressure on this brake line because if that breaks, you're hooped. All right, so I got it flipped around. Just give it a 180 and it'll balance. It's not up there really good, but just don't rattle the car around too much. You'll be fine. Just sits on the little shield here behind the, the uh, rotor. So now that that's out of there, you can just reach in like any other car, pull your old pads out, get those out of the way. And now once your pads are out of the way, you can come back here and look again. You have a big bolt near the bottom, big one as well near the top. Those are 22 mils. Get your ratchet in there, break those loose, take them out. And then this whole bracket here will come off and you can get your rotor out of the way. So now that you got your whole caliper out of the way, all that's left is your rotor. This might be stuck. You might need a hammer. Give it a couple love taps. It'll let go. The one thing I noticed on here is it doesn't have the little screw. A lot of these companies put a little screw in there. It's not really necessary. Just keeps this held on and snug before the wheel goes on. But if it's not in there, not the end of the world, clearly, because this doesn't have it. Because when your wheel goes on and you tighten up your lugs here, it'll suck it down tight and make it fine anyways. But actually, if you look at the one I've ordered, this extra little hole here is threaded. That would be for that screw. But because it's not on this set, we don't actually need it. So one last step to do. If you're doing this on a vehicle and you do have that screw, just let it go. It's usually a little Phillips. Loosen it off, throw it away. You don't need it. All right, so once you give it a couple love taps with the hammer, it does come right off. You might have to hit harder than you think. Give it a good couple smacks, it'll let go. It just gets bound on these bolts here. And this is actually when you realize just how dirty, you can see how dirty and rusted these things actually get. The pads themselves are not actually too bad. You can see they probably got half life left in them still. But when you're driving this thing, it was grinding a little bit. It squeaked probably just from being so dirty and gross under there. 
So for the price of brakes nowadays, especially when you're doing it yourself, I figured if I'm going to take it apart to clean it, I'm just going to replace all the stuff and then you're good for another few years. You won't have to take this all apart again in a few months. So now that we have this all done, get yourself some brake cleaner, hose this all down, make sure it's nice and clean. If it's really rusty and gross, grab yourself a wire brush, just get in there, make sure all the dirt, rust, grime, anything that's on there is out of the way. And then before you put your new rotor on, brake cleaner as well. These things come coated in some weird oil and gunk. You can feel it on your hands even when you're touching it. So hose it down with the brake cleaner. That'll clean that all off. And then you just go in reverse and we'll start getting her back together. All right, new rotors cleaned, put on there. Once again, don't worry about that hole. That's just if you have that extra screw. In our case, we don't need to worry about it. So next thing, get yourself a flathead screwdriver. I'm gonna go back to the caliper bracket here. Get it in these little clips. They do fit in there very snug. That's why I'm saying grab a screwdriver. Give it a twist. You just wanna pop these out of there because the new kit comes with new clips. And they are actually exactly the same clips. Once in a while, especially with these Amazon brands, you get a clip that works, but it's not exactly the same. These happen to be exactly the same. They got the little wings and stuff on there. So that's an extra bonus. So we'll get these clips off. Same thing, grab your brake cleaner and your wire brush, clean this up as good as you can, put the new clips on, and she's ready to go back on the car. All right, so old clips are out. You can see nice new shiny clips are in. Get it all cleaned up, sprayed it down with the brake cleaner, it's good to go. Now one other step that I never do, I've never had these actually seize up, but it's something you can do. Some people want to do it all the time. I don't bother is these pins. They actually go in and out. There is grease in here. And sometimes if the grease is worn out or these little rubber seals are broken and it's leaking, yes, re-grease them. As for mine, I just listen to it. You can see if you pull this in and out, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, let's see. You probably hear the car in the background more than anything, but you can hear there is still grease in there. It's like a suction cup almost going in and out, like a jello sound to it. That tells me there's still grease in there. They still go in nice and easy. You can see they both slide back and forth no resistance, no issue, no binding. That's why I'm not going to do that this round. But if on your vehicle you take these out and these seem really stiff or don't want to move, they do just pull out, get some brake grease, dip them in, grease it up really well, put it back in. Same thing, forward back like that, really work it in. It'll re-grease it. You should be good to go. So now we'll get this back on here. Grab your 22 mil bolts, thread them in there, get them nice and snug. They're ready to put the new pads on. All right, so now that you got the basics all put back on, time to go over to the pads. One thing this kit doesn't come with is your brake lube. And what that is, is you want a little bit on each side of this clip where your pads sit, top and bottom. It's basically, you can see this kind that I got is just called disc brake quiet. It's basically for when your piston's going in and out and your brakes are applying and releasing, your pads slide back and forth. And of course, metal on metal, you're gonna get a squeak, especially when you get some dirt and grime built up in there over time. So what this does is just lubes that up. It's not gonna affect the brakes at all. It's not gonna make you have no brakes, anything like that. But you wanna put a little bit in there and come over to the new pads. And this kit does have the squeal or the wear indicator on all of them. So keep in mind, depending what kit you go with, sometimes they pack these two and two. So you'll have two with the indicator and two with none. So open it all up because last thing you wanna do is put them both on one side and not realize the other side has none because it is actually supposed to be one and one. But this kit, they're on all four, so you don't have to worry about that. And then, like I said, put a little bit of your lube on one end, on the other end, and I also put some on the plate here where your pistons actually touch. Anywhere there might be a little bit of movement, 
just less likely they're going to squeal once you start driving around. All right, so pads are in, wear indicator on top. It could be a little bit tricky because you see how this has two little flaps here. The small one is actually your indicator. That gets pressed down and actually gets tucked underneath. You know, I got a bunch of the lube everywhere, but underneath the piece. So it's kind of tucked between the pad and the bracket. And then this top one actually gets pushed upwards right here. And so once it's in there, close one down, big one up, and then tucks right in. Bottom has nothing, that just slides in, no problem. But can be a little bit tricky, especially on the back because you can't really see. But just get a screwdriver or something, push down on there, give it a, a shove. This one's pretty flimsy, it'll go up on its own, but if you're having troubles, that's what you're looking for. And now next step is actually to compress your pistons back in here because they're at the point of the old brakes now. So you need to push them in. Otherwise you can't get them over the thicker new pads you put on. I recommend going on Amazon, get one of these, just a little pad with a handle on it. And when you twist, you can see it basically pushes in and out. So this is an actual tool made specifically for this. It sits in here like so, doesn't have to be centered. And then what you wanna do, get one of your old pads, put it in there just like that. And then easy peasy, you just give this a twist. Now you can do this with a big pair of pliers or channel locks or anything really that grips. But this thing works like a breeze. You can do it with one hand pretty much and you just slowly twist. Now, I don't wanna do this too hard because I don't want this thing flipping off on me. Again, it'll be hanging on the brake line and that's a big no-no. So, as long as your cap is off the fluid reservoir up top, just keep giving this thing little turns and as you twist, your pistons will get pushed back in and once they're all the way compressed, it'll pop back on your new brakes with no problem. And now once your pistons are compressed in, this is what you'll be looking at. Hit it with some brake cleaner, get it all nice and clean, wipe it down, any rust or dirt or anything on there, just get it off. One reason being, these are just little rubber boots again. And the more gunk you get on there, the more likely you are to puncture a hole and stuff like that, cause a leak, all that type of stuff. So just clean it up as best you can. Then you can flip this back down. Put it on, make sure the backside has grease where the pistons are gonna be actually touching the pad. Then on the front side, I like to put it on as well. I just smear it on with my finger where the actual steel part touches. It doesn't really move, but any, you know, rattling or anything like that, any vibration, especially on brakes, are gonna cause squeaking. So, might look like a little bit of a hot mess, but I put it on there just for extra little protection stops any movement, and, or not movement, but stops any squeaking from movement, and you won't be driving yourself nuts with a brand new set of brakes that are squealing every time you want to stop. And just like that, guys, your brakes is done. Make sure you flip this the right way. You don't want to have a kink in your hose. If you happen to disconnect the little hanger here, make sure you put that back on. We didn't do it, so it doesn't matter. But flip this the right way, put it back on, tighten down your two 17 mil bolts we took out at the beginning of the video, Make it all tight, you can see everything's snug. Throw your wheel back on and your brakes are done. The last thing I forgot to mention is once you hop back in the car after you're done your brakes, no matter which ones you're doing, push down on the brake pedal. It'll be really loose, really spongy at first. Pump it till you feel it stiffen up and that's basically getting the fluid from your reservoir back through the lines and opening and compressing that piston that we pushed in. Just refills it, get it set to where it should be because you don't want to go flying down the road, think you have brakes and you have nothing. So make sure you pump it before you take this thing out on a drive. All right, guys, as you can see, we are all done. Finish up the passenger side, wheels are back on. If you're wondering, 85 foot pounds, torque them down to 85, you're all set. And last but not least, you want to come back here under the hood, grab your cap, put this back on. Again, if it was dirty, make sure it's all cleaned up. Don't put gunk and grime into there. You, less you can get in there, the better. And that is pretty much it. If you're doing this in your garage like I am, a couple simple tools, took about a half hour, 
a little longer because I'm filming, but you could easily do this in about a half an hour in your own garage and save yourself probably a couple hundred bucks. Like I said, Max Advanced Brakes, I did order them off of Amazon. I have the rear set right here. That'll come in another few weeks. I'm swamped at work and do not have time to do it today. So that will be coming. By the looks of the front brakes, they probably don't need to be done, but I got them. They came in a pack. I'll throw them on there, no big deal. New brakes aren't gonna hurt anything, so then I got a new set all around. We're good to go for another 100,000 K. That's pretty much what this one has on it, and the brakes were not horrible, but like I said, they were squeaking, so I thought, clean them up, switch them up, show you guys how it's all done, make another video for you guys to watch. And if you want to see more videos on this and the Frontier we got parked outside, make sure you like and subscribe. Hopefully this video helped you out, and hopefully we catch you guys in the next one.